Today, I'm going to be showing you how to build something really cool. So, there's a new craze, a new fad that's been going around recently, and it has to do with these things called fidget spinners. Now, I just got one for this video, specifically, and pretty much what it is, is it's a device that has a bearing in the center, and that is quite heavy, so that way when you spin it, you give it a lot of momentum, and that momentum lets it spin, for quite a long while. Now, these things are meant to just play with and fidget with while you're bored, and I guess it helps with ADHD or autism. But in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to modify one of these spinners with an external device, so that way you'll be able to either hold it near the spinner or mount it to your hand, so that way you can hold it, and it will turn the fidget spinner into a motor where you can hold it and it will spin indefinitely and it will always be powered, and it will just be spinning, which is actually pretty cool. So this accelerator will utilize electromagnetism to make the fidget spinner turn. So, let's get started. Now, the first thing we're going to need for this project is, of course, a fidget spinner. Now, I never really understood this craze, so I never got one when it first started. But just when I had the idea, after seeing lots of people playing with these, I got the idea to do this. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to modify your spinner. And I got this one off eBay for about $4, so it's pretty cheap. Now, what you're going to have to do is mount the magnets on. Now, this part is pretty easy, but you're going to have to have them all facing the same polarity. On this magnet, one side has a dot in the middle and one side does not. So make sure every side that's facing outward has the same polarity, otherwise this motor will not work. Now, you can glue these on in any way you like. I specifically used hot glue because that's what I had laying around, but epoxy may work better. After this, you're going to want to make sure it's still balanced, because if it's not balanced, then it will not work as a motor. And as you can see right here, it's very balanced. Now it's time to build the circuit. And for this circuit, you're going to need a few parts. Now the first thing you're going to need for this project is a non-magnetic inductor. Now inductors are parts that have a coil of wire around them, around this ferrite core. Now some of these are already magnetized and some of them aren't. You're going to have to find one that's not magnetized. Now if we look at this one right here, you can see already that it's sticking to a lot of the other ones. And if I touch it to a screwdriver, it picks it up. So this one's magnetic, so we can't use this one. Now if we look at this one, this one seems like a good candidate. It is not magnetic. And we, if we check the inductance of it, we can see that this inductor has an inductance of 5.82 millihenries and a resistance of 2.9 ohms. This should make this inductor ideal for our job. This will act as the electromagnet that will be attracting the magnets of the fidget spinner. To test this out, we'll set our bench power supply to about 7 volts and we'll connect this inductor to our power supply. If I touch my power supply to this inductor in a certain amount of taps per second, I can actually get this fidget spinner to spin. Now, this task right here is kind of hard because you have to be constantly tapping this and you're not actually getting it to the right rhythm in order for the fidget spinner to spin the fastest that it possibly can. So for this task, we're going to need something called an electromagnetic reed switch. Now, an electromagnetic reed switch is this little tiny switch that only turns on or closes when it is in the presence of a magnetic field. This means that we can use this electromagnetic reed switch to sense whether there's a magnet and turn on the electromagnet to attract it, and then turn it off when it goes away. Okay, now that we kind of know how our circuit's gonna work, let's design it. Now the most important part of the circuit is the inductor, the thing that actually makes the magnetic field that attracts the motor. Now this inductor is represented by a circuit symbol that looks like this. Now this inductor will create a magnetic field. Now what we need to do with this inductor is we need to put a reverse protection diode inside here, because this inductor, if you apply current through it, it will cause a higher voltage to be put on the outside. Because as you charge it up, it builds up a magnetic field, 
Then as soon as you release power, that magnetic field collapses and it creates a super high voltage across these two pins. High enough to damage any control circuit that you're using with this. So we're going to put a reverse projection diode that goes upwards. Now what happens is this will drain off any excess charge inside the inductor and it's called a flywheel diode. So any kind of uh, any kind of electric charge that is stored in the magnetic field will just be dissipated through this diode. Now we need to control this circuit with that magnetic reed switch. But the issue is if we hook up that magnetic reed switch straight between this part and VCC, then what it will do is it will cause too much current to go through there and it will cause the magnetic reed switch to actually burn up. I've already had one fail on me. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually put a MOSFET right here. Now what a MOSFET does is if you apply a charge to the gate, between the gate and the source, then it will cause current to flow between the drain and the source. So this will allow current to flow through our inductor and into ground. Now I would use a relay for this, but a relay is too bulky and it would make too much sound and take too much current to actually run. Now we're going to have this part of, now this part is obviously going to go to ground because that is where the drain of every MOSFET should go in order for it to work properly. And this place is obviously going to go to VCC. So in order to trigger the MOSFET, we're going to use the magnetic reed switch. Now I'm not exactly sure what the circuit diagram symbol looks for this, so I'm just going to draw the tube that it's in with the switch inside. That should be good enough. Now a MOSFET also needs a drainage resistor because between the gate and the source is a capacitor. So if we charge it up once, this capacitor will have a charge on it and it will stay charged. So this inductor will always stay charged no matter if this actual read switch is on or off. So we're going to add a drainage resistor between the between the gate and ground so that way it can cause the current in the capacitor to flow through here and be grounded out. Now that resistor is going to be a 10k so that way it can discharge. And this is pretty much our circuit. Actually now thinking about it and running some tests on this MOSFET, I really don't need this resistor. This resistor can be replaced by just a straight piece of wire going in. So now to the actual components we're going to need. We're going to need this 10k resistor, the magnetic reed switch, this MOSFET, the inductor, and a piece of perf board to mount everything to. We're also going to need some solder and some wire. This is just about all. Now let's start building it. So to build this circuit board, what I'm pretty much going to do is arrange all the components in the most logical manner on this board after I cut it, so that way it may be able to be used as a good control board. Now I'll arrange everything to the schematic, but I'll wire in such a way that it is easy to access. I'll also be using these tightened wire nuts to actually connect the power supply and the inductor to the circuit. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So without further ado, I'll just put all the parts right here. So without further ado, I'll put all my parts in the pile right here. Then I'll give her a little clap and we should have a finished fidget spinner board. Then I'll give her a clap. Well, looks like I finished that one pretty quick, and boy is this cool. I think this is probably one of the coolest uh, inventions I've made in a while, so let's check it out. So this right here is the circuit board that I've finished. Now it actually looks very professional looking, and it works really, really good. So right here we have the inductor right here, and this is what makes the magnetic field. And then right here we have a... Then right here we have the magnetic reed switch. So that way, as the magnet on the fidget spinner nears the electromagnet, it'll turn on the reed switch, and the electromagnet will turn on the opposite polarity of the pull of the magnet on the fidget spinner, and it will start to push it away at extreme high speeds. Then once the magnet exits, it'll turn off the electromagnet, allowing the next magnet to approach it, and then be pushed away again after it triggers. Over on the back here, as you can see, are all my solder connections. Now all these solder connections are made in the most logical way possible so that way the circuit will work the best. Right here we have the power rail, right here we have the ground rail, and as you can see the current flows from power, which is right here, into the electromagnet, and then out through here into the drain of the MOSFET, and then that is going through the source of the MOSFET back to ground. 
The power also goes here to the uh, reed switch, which goes to the, the gate, which goes to a resistor to the source. And then we also have the reverse protection diode right here. So that is the circuit basically. And I put everything at an angle so that way it would fit better. Now this invention is really cool. And I'm like really stoked right now because it works and it works really well. It spins the spinner way faster than any normal way of spinning your fidget spinner could ever get it to go. Now I haven't measured the RPM yet, but I will using my oscilloscope. And it goes so fast. Okay, so let's try this out. So we're going to connect it to this power supply. But now, as I take a hold of this circuit, and I put the fidget spinner near it, when it gets started, you can see that it starts spinning extremely fast. Now look at how fast that thing's spinning. That's way faster than any person could ever get it to spin. That's cool. Here it is again. Get it started. Synchronized to the frame rate. Now it's going so fast. Synchronized again, that's 120 FPS. So that thing's going really fast right now. I'll take it off and it will stop going. Now, while this thing is running, it's drawing about uh, 0.8 amps. Now to measure the speed of this, what I will do is I will take my uh, oscilloscope probe and what I'll do is I'll attach it to the gate of the MOSFET. Now this will tell us how many times per second this read switch triggers. And if we divide that by three, which is how many times it'll trigger per rotation, we can figure out the exact amount of spins this does per second very easily. So I'll get it started going and we'll see what it does on the oscilloscope. Okay, so now that we got it running, we can try to tune the readout. Now what I figured out on my oscilloscope is that this spinner has a base frequency of 72 hertz. That means each magnet is passing by the base 72 times per second. Now if we divide that by 3 on the calculator, so 72 divided by 3, we get 24. That means this thing is spinning 24 times per second. Now, to find the RPM, or rounds per minute, we're going to multiply this by 60, which is going to get us a whopping 1440 RPM. That's fast. Now, one of the cool parts about this automatic fidget spinner spinner is that it can be connected to a lithium ion battery, so that way you can use it when you're on the go. So I'll just take it, hook it up to this battery that I made in a previous video, just set it down, and then Turn on the fidget spinner, and you can see it works just fine. So there you go. That's how you can make a device that is able to spin up a fidget spinner to 1400 RPM, and probably it can go over that. Now I was able to get the fidget spinner to 1400 RPM, but I think I can get it faster. Now the reason I think I only got it to 1400 RPM at first was because my inductor was getting extremely hot due to the high current flowing through it. And when wire gets hot, its resistance goes up, which means there's less current and there's less opportunities for the magnetic field to grow stronger. So I think if I were to decrease the temperature of this inductor and then raise the voltage of the supply to about 18 volts, I would be able to get an extremely high speed fidget spinner, maybe even to 3000 RPM or more. Maybe even to some of the speeds that the air compressors are able to get. So there you go, folks. This is how you can take a fidget spinner that just is normally meant for spinning. And you can build a device that can accelerate it to extremely high speeds. Much higher speeds than you can get by just spinning it like this. And it is super cool and super fun to play with and mess around with. As always, thanks for watching. And stay tuned for my next video. Where I'm going to make that fidget spinner apparatus. So that way you can actually mount it to your hand. So that way you can just hold your fidget spinner and the electromagnet will be mounted to the side of your hand. So you can just hold it and it will automatically spin up all by itself. So there you go folks, that's how you take this strange societal fad or craze that we've been having recently and using knowledge to make it way better, 
way funner and way cooler. How to make a fidget spinner spin way faster. That's all. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for my next video.